it on my laptop screen Ready for the Python scene All those lines of text so clean Let's code and chase that dream Python world, here we go In this video, we're going to be giving a quick tutorial on installing Python and PyCharm. You're going to need both of these software packages to be successful in this course and to complete the assignments. The instructions in this video will be for the Windows operating system. So if you're using Mac OS, that's for Apple computers, or Linux, the steps will be a little bit different, but will generally follow the same sort of steps. So what do we need to actually run Python programs? Well, we need two things. We need the current release of Python, which we want that to be 3.10 or newer. And that's going to include the Python interpreter, the standard libraries, and other tools like PEP8, everything you need to actually run Python programs. However, on its own, that's not going to be super useful to us because it would require a lot of use of the command line. To make things more usable, we need something called an integrated development environment, or IDE for short. These offer a graphical user interface to the editor and have really nice quality of life features like syntax highlighting, debugging as you're typing code, as well as tool tips, autocomplete features, and as well as debugging tools. Let us see what's going on in our program as we're running it. For this course, we highly recommend PyCharm as your IDE, but that's not required. You can use any IDE you like, but keep in mind PyCharm is going to be used for the examples we show, and it's what our TAs, that is teaching assistants, are going to be expecting when you come to the consulting hours. So we highly recommend using PyCharm. Now, the reason to use PyCharm is it will download the current release of Python for us. So we only really have to worry about installing PyCharm. If we do that correctly, we get everything and we're ready to go. So let's switch over now and see how we install PyCharm and then get that to install Python for us. Okay, open up your favorite browser and navigate to jetbrains.com slash PyCharm. And this should open up a page that looks something like this. It has this nice big download button for us. So once you've navigated to jetbrains.com slash PyCharm, click on download, and it will take us to this page. Unfortunately, though, this page is a bit misleading, as the first option we'll see is to download PyCharm Professional. We don't want PyCharm Professional. That's only a 30-day free trial, and it would cost us money. We don't need that. Rather, scroll down a little bit, and you'll get to PyCharm Community Edition. For almost everything you're going to be doing as a Python programmer in this course and beyond, you're not going to need anything more advanced than PyCharm Community Edition in most cases, so let's stick with that. By default, it should select the correct version for you. On Windows, this will almost always be .exe Windows. On macOS, you might have different versions like this. The version you select has to be based on the CPU you have in your computer. In most cases, it will select the correct one for you, but there is a difference between Apple's silicon CPU and the Intel CPU. So please keep that in mind. If one doesn't work for you on Apple computer, try the other one. Okay, so now it's going to download it for us. It doesn't really matter where we save it as long as we can find it again. And I'll speed up the downloading right now. Okay, now that PyCharm has downloaded, we can run the executable. So make sure that you're running this with the administrative rights. Um, depending on what operating system you use, that setup might be a little bit different. On Windows, it should be as simple as clicking yes, you want to run this as an administrator. Click next, and it will show the location that it's going to install it to. So PyCharm is going to take up about 1.8 gigabytes, so please make sure that you have enough space available on your hard drive. When it gives us some options here, we want to check most of these because it'll make our life a little bit easier. So we want a desktop shortcut. We'll add that to the context menu. We're going to associate this with the .py file extension, and we want to add a bin folder to path. Depending on your operating system, these options might be a little bit different, but for Windows, these are all just quality of life things that we want. We're going to hit install, and then it's going to install PyCharm. Again, I'm going to fast forward this until the install is done. Okay, 
Now that PyCharm is installed, you're going to want to reboot now and reboot your computer. After you've done that, come back and run PyCharm again. We'll cut to me doing that now. Okay, we're back. Hopefully your computer has rebooted successfully now. So if you have PyCharm on your desktop, you can simply click that link. If you don't see it on your desktop, then go to start and type in PyCharm, and then you can click on that link. We'll click on it from the desktop. When PyCharm first starts up, you should get a screen that looks something like this. We're gonna start by creating a new project. So click on new project. We'll give it some name. We could call this our hello world project. Generally you wanna create a new project in PyCharm for every new assignment, every new week of the course maybe, something like that, just to keep things organized. I'd recommend avoiding one massive project that has all your files, because that will get really confusing. So sort of treat these almost like folders in Windows. So one project for each assignment, or one project for each program you're working on. The second thing we need to worry about, other than the name of the project, is the location. This is where it's gonna save this project on your computer. It's gonna be important to be familiar with where that is, especially for when you're working on assignments, so you can submit the Python files you need to for your assignment. By default, this is just gonna save it in my user folder into a folder called PyCharm Projects. If you'd rather have that in Documents or your OneDrive or something like that, you can click on this icon to navigate to where you wanna save it on your computer. Once again, as long as it's anywhere where you can find it and back it up, submit those files, that's great. We don't need to check any of this. And down here is also important. You can see that the Python version we have is Python 3.12.3, .3, which is the current version, and you can see that it's gonna download and install it. Because we haven't installed Python yet, it's gonna download and install it for us. Remember, we needed those two things, the Python release and PyCharm. So far, we've only downloaded and installed PyCharm. But luckily for us, PyCharm will handle Python for us. If you already have Python installed, you could use that version, or you could select a different version and it will download and install that. For us, let's go with the newest version it has, which is 3.12.3. .3. When you're watching this video, that might be a bit different. Go with the newest version. Okay, so now it's downloading and installing Python for us. That might take a second. Okay, so it's downloaded and installed Python, opened up a project for us, and you might get this little window down here on Windows that says Microsoft Defender Configuration. Should be fine to click automatically. This will just make sure that your antivirus software doesn't interfere with what we're doing. And it might ask you to confirm that by clicking yes. So at first you'll get some information here just about PyCharm. We don't really care about that. What we care about is on the left here. This is all the files in our project. So you can see it's called hello world here because that's what I named it. And it's stored in that location that we gave as location. The other thing we're gonna see is possibly a .vm um, folder. We don't want to mess with that at all. This is the virtual environment that it's installed Python and some libraries into. So what do we do now that we have our project set up? Well, we probably want to write some Python code. So if we want to add a Python file to run or to code in, we want to click on the project, click new, and Python file. And we have to give it some name. I'm just going to call it hello for now. And Python file should always end in the .py file extension. That's how we know that they're Python files. I believe regardless of what you type in here, it is gonna add in .py at the end, but I'm just gonna do it manually. So you can see we have our file called hello.py, and it's opened in our editor here. So now we could actually write Python code in here. So the, let's start with a very simple program. In this case, we're just gonna ask the user for their name, and then output hello, their name. So first we're gonna make a variable called name, and we're gonna make that equal to calling the input function. We're gonna ask in the input function, what is your name? So don't worry too much about the syntax right now. We're gonna be getting into that in later weeks and the other videos this week. Right now we wanna be checking that Python's working. 
So we're saying we're creating a name variable, and on the right-hand side, what we're going to assign that variable. In this case, on the right-hand side, we have an expression that says, call the input function, output to the user, what's your name? We're going to get the result from the user, and we're going to store that in name. Then we want to simply print to the user what their name is and welcome them. So to do that, we're going to use the print function, and we're going to say, hello, we'll use an f string. So we're going to say hello, whatever name they gave us, and then welcome to Python. So now that we have our code in, there's some things we can notice. You can see that the PyCharm editor is actually highlighting things for us in different colors. We call this syntax highlighting. This makes it a little bit easier to deal with and work with code, and it's more than what you would get for something like trying to edit your code in Notepad. So this is the idea behind an IDE. It's going to give us additional features that we wouldn't get in a normal editor like Notepad on your computer. So now when we want to actually try running this code, we can see that there is a little play button up here. The button beside it is the debug button. When we want to just test it out, we can hit play or run. And you can see it opens up a new window down here. This is the actual output from our program, as well as where we provide input. You can see it saying, what is your name? And then there's a flashing cursor. This means that it's waiting for input. So the program has stopped on this line, name equals input, what is your name? And it is blocking or waiting for input. So if I say my name is Daniel and hit enter, we can see that it says, hello, Daniel, welcome to Python. It's ran the second line and then it finishes and tells us that it finished. Process finished, exit code zero. So that's great. That's how we can run Python code pretty easily. But this does have many other features and we'll be getting into some of those features in later weeks. But one of them you should know about is the Python console. Going to allow that. So the Python console is another way we can interact with Python. Unlike this method up here, where we're actually creating a Python source file that we have on our hard drive and that we can run whenever we want, this is more interactive. This isn't saved anywhere down here. Rather, this lets us test out certain Python commands and do some quick scripting and allows us to see the results right away. It's a bit different in, than doing a traditional Python source file in that it will give us the results right away. We don't have to print them out. So for example, if I did 5 plus 10 in the Python console, we would get the result of 15 right away without having to store that in a variable. If we did store it in a variable like this, 5 plus 10, you can see we don't get an output. But if we did just say x, then it would tell us what the value of that output is. So this is great for testing out things before we actually write our program. So for example, if I wanted to say, what is x divided by 10 plus 3, we could all do that in the console and get results right away. So it's important to keep in mind there's two ways to interact with Python, through this console down here, which gives us results right away, or more formally through code, like hello.py, and then we run it like this. For all of our assignments, we're going to be wanting to write actual Python files that end in .py so we can submit them. This console down here is good for debugging, testing things, things like that. And we might see some examples of using both while we go through the course. So if you're able to run your code and you got a program like this that's actually running, that means both Python's installed correctly as well as the PyCharm IDE. If you're getting some sort of error, my advice would be to post on the forum so we can help you out there. Maybe go to a TA consulting time and they could help you get it set up. Or you can always Google the error message that you're getting. There's often lots of help online. And that's all I have for you in this video. If you're still having issues installing PyCharm, please do reach out to us on the course forums and we can help you. Make sure to include the full error message you're getting so we know what's wrong with your install. If that still doesn't work, you can go to the Teaching Assistant Consulting Hours and they can help you. They're offered both online and in person, depending on what section you're in. If even that doesn't help, you can book an appointment for an office hour with one of your course instructors and we can help you out. We want to make sure that you have this software installed and you are ready to go for the course. 
So please make sure that you have this working by the end of this week. Thank you for watching and have a great day.